Welcome to this week's REI Weekly Deal Breakdown. I'm your host, Greg Hellback, and thank you for listening to this podcast or watching this video on YouTube. Today, I'm going to talk about a rental property I bought in Chester, New York on 2720 Whispering Hills. I'm going to tell you how I found the property. I'm going to tell you how much I paid for it, and I'm going to tell you how I was able to turn this into a nice long-term cash flowing rental. So if you're not familiar with me, I've been a real estate investor for over eight years now. I've done well over 150 deals, and I got a lot of experience from my career so far. So the goal of this podcast and YouTube video and channel is to share with everybody the lessons that I've learned so you can hopefully not make them yourself. So if you're interested in learning how to do the burr on a rental property, this is the video to watch or the podcast to listen to. So I found the property through direct mail. The seller got a letter in the mail for me or a postcard. He called in. We originally made a deal where I was going to pay him 120 grand and I was going to buy it with basically the squatter in place. The tenant wasn't paying rent. And COVID-19 happened right around that time. And I decided at that point that there was too much uncertainty going on in the world and I wanted to pass on the deal. So I decided to basically bail on the property and did not want to close on my end of the contract. I normally don't do that, but when you have COVID happen like that, when it's like a black swan, one in a lifetime thing, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. So I bailed on the deal. I don't even know if I got my small deposit back, but that was not the point. So anyway, long story short, about nine months go by and I was talking to a friend of mine. And he's like, hey, whatever happened to that Chester property you were gonna buy? And I said, I kind of bailed on the deal. He's like, I oh, mean, what were you paying for that property? I said, 120. He's like, oh my God, that's a home run. You know, you should go back and try to buy it. And I was like, all right, that makes sense. So I called the seller back. I said, hey, did you end up selling this property? He said, no. I said, I'm probably the last guy you want to deal with because I already bailed on the property. But if I paid you a little bit more than I was originally going to pay you, bought the property with the tenants inside that weren't paying rent and put down a big deposit, would you sell me the property again? And he said, yes, I would. So now I went into contract about nine months later at 125,000. So I paid $5,000 more and I put down a $10,000 non-refundable deposit. So I had to buy the house sight unseen. So I got a hard money lender to fund the purchase price up to 90%. Basically had to bring just the closing costs because I already put 10% down. After I closed, I met the tenants at a nearby coffee shop. And I said, basically, I'm the new owner right now. And you know, you can't not pay rent. So you have to pay me something. And during that time, there was a COVID moratorium going on. So technically they didn't have to do anything. They decided to pay me the rent they used to pay the landlord, which was $1,100. I knew that wasn't going to be a good long-term solution, but short-term it was better than getting zero. So they paid me $1,100 a month for about nine months and once, or no, for about six months and then, or no, five months? No, it was five months because I remember I had to refi after six months. And I reached out to the tenants and I said, listen, I'm refining the property. Obviously that has nothing to do with you, but I'm going to need more money in rent. And they said, we're not going to pay you more money in rent. So I started an eviction process. It took about two years to get them out, a little less than two years. I actually just got them out in the beginning of 2023. And during that process, I ended up refinancing the property and paying off the hard money lender and sticking permanent financing on the property from a local credit union. So I had my permanent financing in place. Once I told them I had to refi, they stopped paying the rent, obviously. So I was writing the check every month to the bank in order to pay the mortgage, but I knew that was the case and it was totally worth it in the long haul. Once they got out, I got renovated the property. I put about 50 grand into this thing. It was a total piece of shit. I had to update literally everything, gut the bathroom, you know, gut the kitchen, take it to the studs for the most part, put new plumbing, electrical, you know, everything in there. So it was beautiful. And I paid cash for that rehab. So I laid out the 50 grand myself and I already refied the property. So it, it is what it is and ended up adding a lot of value to the property. It went from being worth probably 220 to 270. So I, I jacked the property value up because I forced appreciation via that rehab. And then I moved in a nice market rate tenant for $2,400. So now that property, after the mortgage and the HOA and all that stuff is accounted for, makes me about $300 a month in positive cash flow. And it's in a beautiful property. It's, it's pristine. It's gorgeous. It's a townhouse. It's got two floors, a garage. It's beautiful. So now that property has 15 year financing on it with no balloon payments. So in about 13 years, it'll be paid off. And that's the theory, obviously. And I should be able to raise the rent every single year. And every single year, the tenants are going to be paying down the mortgage. So over time, the rents are going to go up, the mortgage are going to be getting paid down. So hopefully in about 13 years, I can get at least three to 3,500 a month for that thing. And it's going to have no mortgage and it'll make a huge cash flow. So that's the goal of rental properties. Buy it right, pay it down, pay it off, and then you know reap the cash flow and the benefits. And obviously I was able to cost segregate the property and appreciate a ton of it and get my tax bill way down. So that's 2720 Whispering hills hopefully you got value from this definitely look into the burst strategy if you are looking to grow your wealth if you got value from this video or podcast if you leave me a review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to and also like the video on youtube and share it it'd mean a lot to me and if you're in reno san diego the hudson valley or delaware and you either want a joint venture wholesale deal with me jv a deal or you just want to wholesale me a deal yourself if you're a wholesaler send me an email greg at velocityhousebuyers.com or you can send me a direct message on instagram at grego37 and hopefully we can do a deal together soon i bought a property last year from a wholesaler paid him a sixty thousand dollar assignment fee out in san diego It was a great deal for him it was a great deal for me and everybody won so hopefully you could be the next person i can do a deal with so thanks for watching thanks for listening i'll talk to you soon take care